السلام عليكم الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the Merciful, the Merciful, the Redeem. <coughs> Unquestionably, the perfect praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His aid. We seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I openly bear witness that there is no God, no deity, nothing worthy of worship except Allah the One having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Rabbi shurak li sajri wa yasad li amri wa aflatu uflatami li sani yafqahu kawm. O my Lord, expand my chest for me, make my task easy for me, remove the impediment from my speech, and I stutter on impediment, so they may understand what I say. Allah tells us in the Quran, I will be the Lahim Minister Tana Rahim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Zuyina Ladina Kafarul Haya to Dunya, Wayas Karuna Minna Ladina Aminu, Waladina Taku, Fawkahum Yamul Kiyamati, Wallahu, Warzukum Min Yashahum Bibari Hisab. It is translated, the life of this world has been made appealing to the disbelievers, and they mock the believers. Those who are regardful to Allah will rank above them on the day of judgment, and Allah provides for whomever he wills without limit. We thank Allah for this day of Juma. We thank Allah for waking us for the best day of the week. And we thank Allah for another opportunity, another breath, to show our gratitude to him for making us Muslim. It is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Allah al-Muqtaqeen, the avenger, the disprover, the inflictor of retribution, the retaliator. Al-Muqtaqeen is the one who victoriously prevails over his enemies and punishes them for their sins. Allah is most patient, but the time will come when justice must be given. So avoid things which Allah has forbidden, for he is swift and just with his punishment and does not let transgression go unaccounted for. So we pray and we strive so that perhaps others are guided to this mercy and this blessing called Al-Islam. This masjid was established under the leadership of Imam W. D. Muhammad. So I felt it fitting to quote a Jummah khutbah from him in March 29, 2002. 
pertaining to the Palestinian and Israeli conflict 21 years ago. So the names, some of the people here will be outdated, be replaced by the people who are leaders or prime ministers currently. This is 21 years ago. And he started with this. This world has many issues. Issues that should we should take up and issues that we should ignore. But when the issue is denying justice, where justice is due, then we have to take up the issue. Here are the Palestinians being treated like we were treated on the plantations during the time of slavery. They are being treated like the Africans of South Africa were treated under apartheid. The arrogance of Sharon, he's talking about Ariel Sharon. We can say the same about Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu and his supporters. He says, and no is no different from the arrogance of the rebel. When God said, I want the human being to have his own dignity, to have his own respect, to have his own freedom, to progress in this life that he has created. When he said, when God said that, the jinn, the leader of the angels, puffed up his chest with pride and refused to accept what God wanted. Then he put a challenge to God. He said, okay, you can have your way and I'm going to have my way. I'm going to prove you wrong and I'm going to go out to defeat this man. You say you want to create. When I am going, when I'm done with him, there will be none worthy of worship after you have offered this to them. That's the boast of Iblis. The people of the book call him the fallen star, Lucifer, the bright star of the morning. Here is Sharon, Netanyahu, and his associates, and his mentality, who are presenting themselves before God and mankind with the same arrogance of Lucifer. Here is a man, Yasser Arafat, representing a people who were there in that land before the Jews were there. They are not a people who came from savagery. The Palestinians had civilization before the West had civilization. They are denying them statehood and denying them a territory. It is as if to say, I can't have statehood, and you are recently coming from Europe, who are Jews, can have statehood. And that is not fair. This is my land before you came here. Let us remember that the Palestinians are descendants from the Canaanites, the people who were originally there. And we were living with these other religious people in peace. So during the time of in the early 1900s, the late 1800s, the Jews were in the extreme minority. It was about 5% of them and about 95% of the Palestinians. And they were living together in peace, the Muslims with their Jewish brothers and sisters. And he continues, now here you send people in from Europe who need to be shown kindness, but no, no kindness is being shown to us, the Palestinians, who have rights too. The Palestinians have the same right of those being welcomed to that land, who came there to be rescued and taken in as people who wanted to escape Hitler and his Nazi regime. Now these people come along, come among the Palestinians and not satisfied to share it with the people that were there before 1947. <clears throat> you insist that you have to have a territory for your flag. And they accepted this because you caused so much bloodshed, killing them to have this state. You all don't know this Israel committed ter terrorism and, ma and massacres to gain this land. This is demonstratively true. And he continues. The place was the price was too much, and they finally accepted. And Arafat said, All right. We accept Israel as being a nation, and we will recognize it. And that is still not enough. Now if Israel is going to be a nation with its own territorial borders, that they say they have to be safe and protected, then don't Arafat and the Palestinian people have the same right to have their territory, borders safe 
and secure. Now that America, our country, and its friend, Jerome, Benjamin Netanyahu, the friend of our country, is to protect you and arm you and give you big, big guns, then Arafat and the Palestinians deserve to have a gun the same size as your gun. I haven't gotten off my subject of Surah to Musta King, is what Imam Muhammad said. The path of uprightness. God obligates us who say that we believe in Islam and accept our Lord and his servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be witnesses in this world. What is said, what is said does mean this. Not just that we are being a people, but we are a strong people, a firm people standing on justice. You are witnesses for God. God wants some witnesses down here on this earth, witnessing what God wants in man. What God wants in man is justice on this earth. If we are weak in faith, we are going to be weak in courage. We are going to be fearful. The scriptures that came in the Quran are not saying anything less than this. The fearful and unbelievers shall have their part in the hell fire. Some of us are more scared of people than we are fearful of Allah. And he continued, brothers and sisters, who do you fear? Do you fear man or do you fear God? If you fear man more than you fear God, then you are not a believer. If you fear governments of the world more than you fear God, then you are not a believer. A believer faces the whole world, not one government, but all governments of men. He will face the whole world and be killed and die smiling as he is dying. He knows who God is and he would die rather than have the world take him into disobedience to God. He says the Bible knew that even Jesus Christ's followers would be fearful and too weak to stand up for what he stood up for after he was gone. The same happened to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In every respect, we see Jesus, or Isa alayhi salam, and Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right together. The community of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he went away, they betrayed him. Prophet Muhammad said that his ummah would go into darkness, but it would rise again as, as it once rose. How did it rise the first time? It was on the backs of people strong in faith, not rich in material things, not rich in knowledge of the world, not graduates of colleges and universities, not learning in the scriptures. They were not even able to read the scriptures. That people were chosen, chosen to build the first community of Islam in Medina, in Mecca, in Saudi Arabia, in Fez, in Morocco, and in different places. In Iran, which was called Persia, until it reached Spain and parts of Europe, into France. But it started right there with the people who nobody expected could shoulder, could shoulder on their backs the whole country or government. They didn't think those people could ever be responsible for government life. We have to stand up as people for justice. But we can't until we are first a people strong in faith because the world intimidates you. It will make you fear for your life, for your family's life. It will make you fearful for your community life. A whole community has, to, has been put in prison by Sharon and his Nazi babies, is what Imam Muhammad says, who have grown up to be grown up Nazis. I'll give a bit of commentary. He's meaning that they are succumbing to the same racism that the Nazis did, committing a genocide right before our eyes. And he continues, they have put our brother, Yasser Arafat, and his humble, patient self in prison. 
God has given him that wisdom to save his life. But if he had, hadn't been that way, they would kill him. And America would say, good riddance. I don't mean America the people, is what he says. America the people, we are not with the treatment of the Palestinian people. We are not with the treatment of America and the Palestinian people. But America are very slow to go against their own government when there is not enough light shined on the issue. If there is enough light on the <coughs> issue of the treatment of the Palestinian by the Israeli and by Sharon, the American people would be enraged. Today, my commentary, most Americans, particularly young Americans, are enraged by what is happening with their tax dollars. But let me continue with his football. I have never accepted to be a coward by a criminal, is what he says. A righteous man can make me afraid. A righteous man can make me back up. A criminal can just make me go back and come up with a strategy to take his head off, take his head off his body. This regime that they have in Israel should be beheaded, is what Imam W.D. Muhammad said in a hook 20 years ago. Do we have this kind of history to be written, to be written of the United States of America, that we live in the name of these kind of global safety, to make the world safe while arming Sharon and giving him big powerful guns and the right to lock up the leaders of Palestinians like they are criminals? Talk to him like he's a little child or a bad boy. Slap him in the face before the world like he's a bad child and the President of the United States and its government, the Senator and the Congress, say virtually nothing. What kind of record for the United States is that that we have to leave the generations to come? And they are going to look back at the treatment of human beings by their own government putting big guns in the hands of Sharon's insane or inhumane administration. He says, the wicked are saying, don't say anything. Let Sharon, let Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu do what he wants to do. Those are Jews. You can't do anything with them. Everybody who comes against them, they lose. Imam Muhammad said, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came against wrong, against Jews, against everybody, and he did not lose. There were bad Jews. Medina making trouble. And I say bad Jew because I recognize that the majority of the Jews are good people, beautiful human beings. I don't care if a man presents himself as God and the world believes he is God. If I detect something, that he is a wrong person, that he has a bad plan or bad design for me, I am going to fight him as hard as I can. He won't make me cow a coward. He won't make me afraid. I will plan something for him. Shame on this great society we live in. The great man of Congress and the Senate. We had a senator in Illinois who stood up and spoke out against the policies of the Jewish people and they got rid of him. But he didn't go and beg for their forgiveness. That man stood firm. That's the kind of white man I admire, is what he said. That's the kind of American that I admire. That's the kind of public servant that I admire. Brother, you gotta come up a little bit closer. A man who will risk his fame, losing his position, losing his income, losing everything, rather than to be a witness for God, rather than not to be a witness for God and stand up for truth against oppressors and liars and persecutors and murderers of innocent life and people. This is what we are seeing in Gaza right now. This is no more than what is expected of good people. He says, my theme is obedience to God. That is uprightness. And God reveal all this to you and you shall be belong to those who are believers in it. Then follow that guidance. Stand up for that guidance. Stand up for the commandments that God left with us by way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
and do not fear. Those who believe in God in the hereafter shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. That's what he quoted. I have heard people in church say, God took off from me the fear and the grief. This is the best blessing because fear and grief are the worst burdens a human being can carry. Fear that he's going to lose something and grief about something that he has lost. This is the religion of uprightness, the rigid religion of Abraham, the religion in faith. It addresses the obligation of the individual to work for and support the whole society. Our law obligates every Muslim individual, male and female, even the young boys when they are at the age of 12, they are supposed to be made aware that they are to shoulder the responsibility of society. This goes for the females also, the mothers of our society. There is no escape for this, he says. If we want to be recognized as Muslims, we have to accept to be strong and to be faithful and to stand up against wrong. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, be against wrong, whether it be a big man or a little man. They asked him how to deal with it. And he said, with your hands. That means to take physical effort to stop a wrong if you can. If you can't and you don't have the wherewithal, then with your speech, speak out against it. Even then, if you can't find the wherewithal, at least against it in your soul. That means to be against it in your heart, to dislike it. Your soul and your spirit's energy will be a weaker jihad, but don't think that your soul's energy won't be sent out against your enemies. Let us stop now and ask Allah for forgiveness. Amen. Amen. The perfect praise belongs to Allah, the guardian and evolver of all systems of knowledge. May Allah's blessings and peace be bestowed upon our noble leader, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, upon his companions, upon his followers, all of us, all together, all over this world. Brothers and sisters, what is happening in Gaza, in the West Bank, is a genocide. It is ethnic cleansing. It is apartheid. It is war crimes, massacres. Killing children is not self-defense. This morning, after the ceasefire, Israel started bombing the Gazans again. They have already killed about 15,000 people in two months, most of them women and children. This is not hyperbole. This is not an exaggeration. This is not propaganda. These are demonstrative facts. 6,000 Palestinian children are among those killed in two months. 6,000. This is greater than the year's global total for children killed in a conflict zone for the past three years. Last year, about 3,000 children were killed in total in any war zone. In two months, they killed 6,000 children. It was reported yesterday that Israel knew over a year ago about this attack that happened on October 7th. They knew it was going to happen. <clears throat> Let me, let me remind you that the Palestinians are in an open air concentration camp. I don't call it a prison. A prison would suggest that they are criminals and they've committed some crime. The only crime they have committed is being Palestinian on a land that the Jewish people want. They are in concentration camps and their movement is heavily restricted and monitored. And Israel knew a year ago about the plan to attack them. And they are using that attack to commit genocide and steal more land. Palestinians are under occupation. 
occupation is oppression. And what does Allah say about oppression? وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِّيلِ اللَّهِ لَذِينَ يَقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَقْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُ الْمُقْتَدِينَ Fight in the cause of Allah against those who wage war against you. But do not exceed the limits. Allah does not love the transgressors. He continues, وَاقْتُولُهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُوهُمْ وَأَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ يَحْمِ حَاثُ أَخْرَجُوكُمْ وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَشَادُ مِنْ قَتْلِ Kill them where you come upon them and drive them out of the places from which they drove you up. For oppression is far worse than killing. In fact, the definitive, the definite article is on there. The oppression is worse than the killing. It's also translated the oppression, the persecution is worse than slaughter. And Allah continues, do not fight them at the sacred masjid unless they fight you there. And if they do so, then fight them. This is the reward of those who disbelieve. But if they cease, then surely Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَاكُونَ فِتْنَةُ Fight them until there is no more oppression. This is not a pacifist deen, a religion, a way of life. Allah initially called the Muslims to be nonviolent to endure persecution, to endure oppression. Then he told them to migrate, leave the oppression. When they returned, he told the believers again to leave. Then the command came to fight, qatala. To kill and to fight have the same root. Allah says oppression is worse than death. Do we know what that means? It means fight until the death. Resist evil until you die or until oppression dies. Our deen is for freedom, for liberty, and for justice. We are to submit to no one and nothing except Allah. Oppression is hated by Allah Ta'ala. Our prophet has a score sayings about oppression. He says, the Most High, Allah Ta'ala, that he said, O oh my servants, I have made oppression unlawful for myself. Allah doesn't even oppress you. And I have made it unlawful among you, so do not oppress one another. It is unlawful for Allah Ta'ala to oppress you, so no human being can oppress you without you resisting. <coughs> Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told, my, told um, Mu'ad, who was going to be a governor in Yemen, he said, be afraid from the curse of the oppressed as there is no screen, no screen between their invocation, their prayers, their du'a, and, and Allah. So the oppressed giving du'a goes directly to Allah. This is a warning for those people in leadership not to be oppressive. Our prophet also says, the supplication of someone who is oppressed is always heard. It's three categories, someone who is oppressed, someone who is going on a journey, and the prayer for a mother or a parent for their child. This is how important oppression is. Abu Bakr anhu, reported that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says there is no wrong action more likely to be punished in this world and in the hereafter than oppression and severing ties of family. In Gaza, in the Congo, in Sudan, people are doing both oppression and severing ties to family. Think of what punishment they will be given. 
He also says, beware of the oppression, for oppression will be darkness on the day of resurrection. Whoever oppresses one person and doesn't beg for forgiveness before the day of judgment, all of his good deeds will go to that person that he has oppressed. And if he doesn't have good deeds, his bad deeds will go on that person that he oppressed. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, help your brother, whether he is an oppressor or he is the oppressed. And the people said, of course, they understood helping someone who is oppressed. But how can we help the person who is an oppressor? And the Prophet said, by preventing him from oppressing others. It is our goal, it is our duty, it is our job, it is our deen to speak up to do anything we can to stop oppression, especially to resist. And our prophet says the best fight in jihad is the path in, in the path of Allah is to speak a word of justice to an oppressive ruler. Brothers and sisters, continue to speak out. Use your voice. Speak out against oppression. And if you can't, for fear of retribution, at the very least, hate it in your hearts. Allah 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Please don't forget your zakat obligation. If you uh, want to do zakat via cash app, it is dollar sign M W S A L A A M. If you want to uh, mail it, you can mail it directly to the Masjid at 614 West 35th Street, North Virginia 23508. Or you can mail it at the P.O. Box, which is 1802 North Virginia 23501. Um, yeah, I'll be here tomorrow, inshallah, in the morning and Sunday morning for Fajr prayer around 5.30. Um, there'll be an Arabic class at 11 o'clock, inshallah, on Sunday. Talim at 1 o'clock. Um, please don't forget the uh, coat drive. So please bring uh, coats. We have some brought in. Um, so please don't forget to bring those in. Those are people, people who are in need. It's getting cold outside, so they will definitely need them. Um, also, we have the cleanup next week. In the morning. Next next week or this week? No. In the morning. In the morning. Tomorrow. In the morning. In the morning. Tomorrow. Okay. All right. I'll do it now. What time? Some later. Yes. Yes, sir. You want to put it off the next No, I do not. I do not. No, no, no. That was my mistake. Uh, tomorrow at 9? Tomorrow at 9. Tomorrow at 9, inshallah. Please come. Uh, as many hands as we have here and make it much easier. If you've been to the uh, Wudu station, that back area there is what we want to clean up. We got a bunch of uh, equipment and things that's been in there for a long time. If we hand it off, it'll be much easier to do. Um, we'll put some less burden on the brothers. It says some late. 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 We said we're gonna go from nine to twelve, but what we'll do is we'll go from nine and then go a couple hours to see how far we're going. Mm -hmm. And if we don't think we're gonna finish, we'll cut off in two hours and then shall I'll come back next week Inshallah. and finish it. So there's a lot of stuff in there now. Right. Don't tell them that, man. We want to know that. It's scary. <laughs> so, listen, we know the benefits of cleaning up the masjid. So, please, if you can, just come for a couple hours so we can have the masjid clean. Uh, the brother comes throughout the week. Uh, a couple of people come throughout the week to clean up. So, please, if we can help him in any way, um, inshallah, we do so. Um, I would miss, I want to make sure I mention every week, as many weeks as I remember, to have these cards. If we don't have them, please get this emergency medical card. Uh, we'll always, um, always have some copies and you can have them and put them in your wallet for people who are Muslim and some tra tragedy befalls you. The, um, the emer emergency personnel will know that you're Muslim and know that uh, they need to contact your family and the masjid so we can take care of you. Uh, with that said, the Adin pies in the refrigerator for $5. We'll have the laundry detergent for $15. And we also have prayer books, the demonstrative prayer books with the CD that's $33. For those people who are in need of uh, uh, the prayer, how you pray and how it looks to pray. Um, with that said, I think that's all. Is that it? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, no, that's it. So I'm going to let you. I love you.